Hi everyone, are we are we live? I'll make sure that um, we are on. Hi everyone, welcome to All Night SF. Mia, one of the co organizers here on All Night SF. We have a fun and informative event for you today with Arturo from Looking Glass, a hologram company, and we'll be going into deeper explanation of holograms and the field technology and share their latest product development with us. But before we get started, I'd like to welcome everyone to use the chat function during the show. Introduce yourself, share what you like about the talk, make some friends, and ask questions as we'll have time for Q&A at the end. So for those of you who aren't in the know, All Night SF is part of a greater Augmented World Expo family. I'm going to share my screen real quick here. Oops. And so, and is the world's number one spatial computing event series and supports 32 independently run all nights around the world. So before we get started, how many of you have been to an AD.live event? I can't actually see who is responding on that. So I'll assume some of you have um, attended. So Adam at Live is a great place to meet new people and grow your network with others that are also interested in exercise. It has tons of resources and great videos with leading experts in the field, such as these upcoming events on AW.Live. If you aren't really familiar with AW.Live, I highly recommend checking it out after the show. If you didn't get a chance to attend the expo in Santa Clara this back May, you have two more opportunities to share. Next one is in Singapore at the end of August. It's AB Asia. And there's another one in Vienna in October. You can use these discount codes for AB Asia. It's a really actually awesome discount. So um, take advantage of those if you can if you're in the area. And then also for um, 20% off for AWBE. So I'll leave these up for a few more seconds so that you can either do a screenshot or write those um, discount codes down. Maybe someone can actually also write those codes into the chat so people can um, capture it. You can also watch all of the sessions from Augmented World Expos on their YouTube channel, and they are typically updated two to three weeks after the event. And lastly, AW Academy, where you can attend online live courses by experts in XR community, May for the XR community and beyond. You can find these courses on awxr.com. So for example, there's a fundraising prep course for XR startups, with two weekly cohort sessions over six weeks. We work with you to refine your product, market, and business strategies and conclude with creating the perfect investor pitch. There's also a web AR, which is now available on demand. So check out all of those classes at awexr.com. And I'm gonna stop sharing. So that's it for housekeeping. So I'm going to um, hand this over to Wen, who's going to introduce um, today's event. Thank you, Miyoung, so much. Um, it's, uh, it's our pleasure today. I just want everyone to know we're overjoyed to have uh, Arturo J. Real from Looking Glass joining us today. Uh, you know, Looking Glass has been a great partner to the whole AWE family, 
and they have been doing some phenomenal work as of late with AI and XR and marrying those two worlds. So it's my great, great pleasure to introduce Arturo J. Real, accomplished artist and community manager for Looking Glass. Welcome, Arturo. Thank you so much for the invitation, Wen. Thanks so much for having me, AWE Live, and thank you all for tuning in. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Um, you know, for for those of uh, the people who are joining us, and I see some of my creator friends joined us. Um, who is Looking Glass? Yeah, that's a it's a great question and topic of today. So how amazing that everyone turned out just for that. Um, so Looking Glass is a hologram company. It's like based out of Brooklyn with operations in Hong Kong as well, and it's a team of creators and people who really strongly and firmly believe in the sort of utopian, not dystopian futures that we've been promised, where our technology augments our lifestyle uh, and is kind of there to work with us and not against us. Awesome. Um, actually, I got a chance to see the, the larger looking glass uh, at the last AWE show, and it's really amazing to not have to wear uh, glasses and get this 3D effect. Um, for those of people, for those people who aren't aware of kind of how the looking glass works, um, could you please kind of explain what light fields are and and how that applies to the looking glass platform? Sure. Uh, yeah, the way that the light fields work, and in, in the short and in essence, is uh, diffracted light. So you have uh, kind of this uh, optical array that is kind of like our LED screens having light pushed past it. And we know that there's red, green, and blue light uh, that is emitting off of the screens on which we're watching, uh, you know, in the devices that we're watching this live stream or that we're participating in this and that we use every day. Uh, but the way that the uh, looking glass displays work is they also have another component for D, which is depth or dimension. And so this is actually pushing light out, not just straight out the way that your phone would, but actually with a calculation of where each pixel and subpixel should be to give the illusion of depth. So in other words, it's, it's pushing light out in a way that gives you the kind of depth cues that you need in order to see an object uh, as though it were actually in the space. And while it's something that um, like, translates really well over video, as you'll see in a moment, it really needs to be seen to be believed. Uh, and I love, I'm like just getting eager to show you all, but I want to hold off the, <laughs> the, so the temptation just a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. And and uh, yeah, I I got a, a, a we got a quick look with um, our special guest today, so mm -hmm. I won't spoil it. But um, uh, so we're going to. You have two amazing platforms for creators that you're you're rolling out or that you you have right now, right? And I I believe the first one we're going to discuss today is blocks. Um, I, I got a chance to um, join the beta, and I've seen some of the amazing artwork that, you know, creators are leveraging this, this whole new medium to kind of present their work. Um, so could you kind of explain that a bit to us about how artists are using um, Looking Glass and also using this new platform? Yeah, I think uh, to answer that first, I, I'll have to get over my uh, it, uh, my uh, eagerness to show you what it looks like so you can really get a sense of what it is that Blocks enables. So I'll show you that in just a second. Right over here, we have a looking glass portrait. This is on my desk and it's showcasing Uncle Rabbit, who you'll get to meet later. Uh, but the idea is this is actually a scene that I made in Blender. I'm a 3D artist and creative and, and I love playing around with new technologies, looking glass being one of them. And uh, it appears as though we're looking into this device in which Uncle Rabbit uh, is handing us a carrot. And if we move it or we move ourselves uh, in, in the physical realm, we'll see different angles of this one scene. And so this is truly like the magic behind the looking glass where uh, this is just a camera. There's nothing special about the camera other than that it can do these like crazy wacky movements in, in, in quick speed. But uh, without any sort of headset or special trickery, we can see into the looking glass and we can see this, that the scene appears to be kind of embedded in there. But if I put my hand into it, there's, you know, just a, a panel. 
Um, and so what Blocks, the platform that Wen uh, was discussing, enables is that it, it allows creators who are using Looking Glass and Looking Glass technologies to create something that doesn't have to only exist or live on the Looking Glass. And to show you what I mean by that, I'm gonna quickly share my screen here and uh, give you a sense of what that looks like. So we know we've just seen the Looking Glass here. This is actually the Kickstarter video uh, from a couple of years ago showcasing the way that there's different uh, types of media that you can actually bring into this display from real world captures as we're seeing here uh, to uh, depth created imagery uh, like that that you might take on your phone or on your Android and of course uh, 3D content that you create in tools like Blender, Unity, Unreal Engine. So we support all of these platforms and give creators the opportunity to view their, their work as they created it. Uh, one of my kind of uh, uh, gripes really with uh, sharing my work as a 3D artist and 3D creator is that I'm only usually the, the one that knows how everything looks when you move from side to side and something that the Looking Glass actually affords you, as we'll see in just a second here back on my screen, is that it gives you the different views of each, um, of each angle uh, from the scene, depending on, on actually how much you want to display. And that's really important when you have a scene uh, kind of like the ones that in, in these videos that are showcasing refractive properties of different uh, subjects or objects in the scene, or as we see in this one, the reflective properties of, uh, of the materials on this guy's face, like uh, 3D artists and creatives put a lot of time and a lot of work into getting all these details just right, subsurface, uh, um, subsurface and surface imperfections and ref reflections and refractions, as I mentioned, things like this, like take a lot of work. And then you just kind of like print screen and you see a, a 2D version of this, right? Um, and so what Blocks allows you to do is when you create something for the looking glass, now you can suddenly share it and embed it on any website uh, that you like that takes the, the iframe that the Blocks is set in. And you can share it with a community of artists and creatives around the world that are also using the same tool. And so uh, you'll see here on screen a bunch of different blocks that our community members have created over the past uh, year or so since this platform has been out. Um, some of them uh, you'll see later today, like this one, which is a real world capture of Nikki from Looking Glass here. And uh, these are actually synthetic content, the uh, Al Pacino, the like Scarface and, and these other characters are made in Maya by a, a, an artist in, out of the UK uh, called Jay House uh, and ZBrush as well. And so suddenly you can create a scene in 3D as you normally would if you're a 3D artist or in the real world if you're a photographer and you can share it with everyone holographically. And the, the kicker for this, which is a part of the kind of very long-winded answer to what exactly is Blocks and what, it, what does it afford you, uh, comes in this video, which admittedly is a little bit dated, given that uh, this is from, let's see, a year ago. Um, but the idea is very much the same, which is that you create it once for the looking glass, but then you can share it everywhere. So if you go to blocks.glass right now, you'll see a bunch of holograms. And if you have a looking glass display or you have a virtual reality headset or you want to visit it on your phone, these on screen are the different experiences that you can get from actually just that one embed code. So you render once and then you can deploy it everywhere. You can use it um, to show your holograms in your portfolio. I'm gonna just quickly go off script here and uh, pull up my friend Drace's hologram page. And he's actually showcasing all of his work uh, that he's wow. done for Looking Glass uh, and just on his own, right? And the cool thing is, or one of the many cool things is we can click through to this hologram that we just saw a second ago. And I'm gonna go and bring up my screen here again. And uh, if I close Looking Glass Studio, which I've just opened to show you Uncle Rabbit, we'll see that the display should be blank. But as soon as I hit the cast button over here, we should soon see uh, the hologram appear on the Looking Glass display. So let me make sure everything is set accordingly. I'm opening up my OBS scene here. And when let me know uh, if and when you do see it up here, but it shouldn't take very long. Uh, let's see, there we go. And so now we have that um, hologram that was previously on this website appear on the looking glass. And part of the reason why it took so long is because back when Drace was creating this 
uh, piece of art was one of the very early days of blocks. And we were still trying to figure out uh, between the beta testers what the uh, best resolution to render out of Blender was. But we can easily go to some of the other holograms on this page and click through to one of these, like this one that I made. And we'll see that in a couple of seconds, if all is going well, uh, this hologram should get overwritten by the one that we're uh, trying to view now, which again is this one of this little dog um, going to the moon. And so uh, whether it shows here or not, hopefully you get the idea that, there we go, that um, you have all of these different refractive properties like in the uh, materials that are on top of the, that are making up the spaceship uh, and otherwise, and you can see them, uh, not just on the looking glass display, but if you don't have one, you can also see it here in blocks and you can embed it again anywhere. So whether you're posting your artwork on Twitter or ArtStation or elsewhere or on your own website, uh, you don't have to worry that some of your details are gonna get lost. You can just simply also see them here in blocks and it works in augmented reality headsets and the virtual reality headsets, of course, looking glass displays and on your phone so I can, uh, Again, somewhat off script, try to pull up a block here on my phone of Nikki, uh, which I took a couple of months ago. And when the internet here in the lab finishes loading, I can show you uh, if you didn't have one, you can test this out again on uh, yourself on your phone. Just go to blocks.glass and click on any of those. And after it finishes loading, uh, you'll be able to wiggle your phone for your friends or for yourself with your own artwork or that that someone else has made and, and really showcase the depth, which is really um, something else. Uh, when I started my own foray into holography and into uh, light fields, it came by way of my work in photography and cinematography in which, of course, uh, we see the world in a very different way. We're thinking more about uh, like aesthetics and angles and how do we tell the story through what is actually on the screen. And uh, that's actually what led me then to wanting to augment what I was doing with 3D graphics. And so I started learning Blender, Unreal, Unity, and uh, stumbled upon Looking Glass, which was giving me the opportunity to, to experience that 3D artwork, just like I did in Blender, but without necessarily having to worry that I was gonna be missing something when I wanted to share it with the world, uh, because now I was able to show them what it looked like on my scene without having to share my files or, or something too beefy. And so now that this is loaded, I can show you here, and let me just quickly go uh, here to make sure that we can see it, but I'm just wiggling my phone. There's no camera trickery, but you get the sense of depth and dimension when we see uh, Nikki's hand occluding uh, her face as we're moving and wiggling the phone back and forth. And it's just using the accelerometer on the phone and some magic code trickery to uh, kind of give you that effect. And so somewhat in a nutshell, that is what Blocks uh, enables. And it's something that I'm really, really passionate about because again, as a 3D artist, like I don't have to worry anymore that uh, what I'm sh people are only getting a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the picture. That's, that's amazing. I mean, I, as, a, as a creative myself, that's right, the, the, the idea of depth and getting a sense of 3D is, um, is amazing because it's something that's been a barrier for, I think, a lot of artists, right? They either have to use motion, video, or some other way to to show that. And uh, wow, that's uh, blown away. <laughs> um, was there, um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on regarding um, the looking glass display itself before we introduce our special guest today? Uh, yes, actually. So if you're tuning in uh, at the end of the show within the next couple of days, we will uh, be providing anyone who's interested uh, just fast track access to blocks and to this next platform, which I'll talk about. But if you've ever been to Disney or you've wanted to go or some amusement park, uh, you get this one ticket that lets you skip the line. Uh, so just by virtue of being uh, attending this talk and hanging out until the very end, uh, you too will get to get to do this with your own uh, 3D creations. And I'm really, really excited to see what you all make. Um, uh, the looking glass display as well, like we'll be providing uh, AWE and all the viewers with a discount code so you can get your own if you like and we are shipping immediately and around the world so uh, if you obviously have any questions don't uh, don't be shy feel free to ask them in the Q&A 
and we will get to them later. But otherwise, you can find me online as Arturo J. Real, which will be available after the show, or hit me up on the Looking Glass Discord. Uh, but we have we have very exciting stuff to show you all. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that segment. Wow, that's um, that's awesome. I'm I'm actually really really looking forward to that too. Um, so the um, I think the next thing is something that. Uh, I think is just amazing considering what's been happening with a this AI explosion lately and um, these uh, large language models like ChatGPT that are enabling a completely different way for us to interact with um, our, our technology. And Looking Glass has done something I think that's absolutely revolutionary You've actually created a platform to allow creators, to allow uh, people that use the platform to actually interact with these 3D characters. Um, could you please tell us a little bit more about this new platform? Yes, so whether, uh, before we get to the real kicker, I've just remembered, about the depth conversion, which I know is something that you mentioned uh, oh, yeah, that yeah. the viewers and, and the attendees would be really excited about. Uh, and it's also something that I'm really, really excited about. So sorry to keep teasing you, but you're going to have to hang out with us uh, until we get to the, the even juicier bits. Uh, but this one of the things awesome. that, yeah, one of the things that uh, Blocks is really cool for uh, and that we'll be rolling out in a relatively soon is actually conversion via uh, depth conversion. So if you're familiar with depth conversion software or not, it doesn't matter. We, we make it relatively easy for you to take your creations and convert them into holograms. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a second. I'm just pulling up an example scene here. So uh, don't tell anybody at Looking Glass that I showed you this because we're actually, it's not quite ready yet. Um, but if you're watching, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to show my screen here. This is actually a um, depth converted image. So this is a, an AI render that I did using Midjourney, and there, I have a couple of others. And what I'm showcasing here is uh, something that will soon be able to be cast to your looking glass, just as I, I showed you earlier. So you'll be able to take uh, any Midjourney render, any family photo that you have from years ago, and any real like content that you have that hasn't uh, necessarily been um, created natively in 3D. And you'll be able to convert it into something that gives you this illusion of depth and share it with your friends and your family and other people in the Looking Glass community uh, in a way that will let them perceive the very same. Um, so this is a depth conversion tool. We already have one up uh, and running. So if you look up Looking Glass 2D to 3D conversion, the, you can already get started on using this. Uh, but this new feature that I'm showing you here that I'm sure my team will be like, why did you show them that so early? Uh, well, because I'm here, uh, we'll be rolling out at some point in the future. And I'm really, really excited about it because as somebody who obviously makes a lot of stuff in mid-journey, like I don't think Einstein ever got to put on uh, this VR headset, but suddenly we have the power of tools like mid-journey and Dolly and others, and we can make whatever we want. But not only that, thanks to Looking Glass, and uh, advances in AI technology, as when it was mentioning, we can actually convert things into 3D and then show them on things like the looking glass. So to me, that's like really, really exciting uh, advancement in uh, artificial intelligence technology. And then of course, uh, we know that in recent uh, months uh, and especially over the last year, we've had wild, wild advances uh, so far as um, chat and agents are involved and so, now, without further ado, introducing, which you may have already heard of, Looking Glass Light Forms, or holograms that say hello. So these are actually conversational holograms, and you can talk to them, you can ask them questions, you can chat with them. And we have some examples here of characters like Little Inu, whoops, and, and others just chatting away. Um, and you are gonna get to meet one of them, or more of them today, uh, including Uncle Rabbit, who's here in this photo. Uh, but before that, I have to do a little bit of uh, screen finagling here. So maybe if there's any questions that are in the chat that we can address uh, when, sure. I'm happy to, to get to those while I set us up to, to demo this. Sure, let me check. So anybody, if you have questions, uh, please, uh, Put them in the chat right now. And also, um, just so you know, I've dropped an email 
uh, in the chat for anybody that wants us uh, wants beta access. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting in on this. This is exclusive for attendees. And um, personally, I'm super excited for the new depth conversion. And I think that the ability to embed your holograms on your website and other media um, is fantastic. But uh, of course, nothing beats the looking glass uh, for a true 3D experience. Um, I've experienced that in person. I actually got a chance to see one of the, the large versions at AWE and it's, you know, there are some other, let's say there are some other competing platforms for these uh, glassless displays, but there really isn't anything quite like the looking glass. So, um, you know, so yeah, I'm of uh, I'm I'm of the opinion that you know everybody can win, and so there's there's a lot of different tools and a lot of different technologies that are doing or trying to do similar things, and it really just depends on the kind of minutia or the nuance of of them. So if you want an experience uh, like this one of Uncle Rabbit, where you, your friends, your family can all kind of sit around the same place and look at it without having to wear something on your face or without having to be uh, kind of glued to a single user device, then the looking glass is the one for you. If it's just uh, you experiencing it for yourself, then I, I will say as a user of the looking glass for now for over a year, you can also use this one, but there's many, many other tools uh, and, and technologies out there that are approximating uh, the very same thing. And it's really, really exciting time to kind of be in the space where there's so much movement towards all of this, and especially insofar as uh, AI is now involved, uh, it really seems like the possibilities are endless. Um, and speaking Absolutely. of endless, I, uh, I have a friend uh, here with us today who has endless carrot jokes. So I'm gonna quickly share my screen over here. I'm gonna share it with system audio so you can hear it all. Um, and let's see, what is this. Here we go, sharing the screen. And you'll forgive me as I very quickly select this. And now we're seeing my face, but now we're also seeing Uncle Rabbit, who's here with us today. And I'm going to quickly unmute him and we'll go back to him. Hello, Uncle Rabbit. Can you hear us? Hello there. Uncle Rabbit here, ready and listening. What can I do for you, my hobby friend? I'm hanging out with my friends from AWE, and I was wondering if you could share with us a story about holograms and Star Wars and carrots. Well, let me tell you a tale as adventurous as a rabbit leaping through a carrot field. Once upon a time, in a galaxy not too far away, holograms filled the air like bouncing bunnies. The Jedi rabbits used their holographic carrots to teach the ways of the Force to young Padawabits. And believe me, those holographic carrots were as crisp and crunchy as a fresh carrot straight from the garden. So, my WWE pals, always remember <laughs> to hold your holograms tight and munch on those carrots, for the Force is strong with the veggie-loving bunnies. Where's your beard, Uncle Rabbit? Well, 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 look who's got a furry face that even a rabbit would envy. <laughs> One dashing beard, my friend. <laughs> chin, you'll be the hair desk working hopster in town. Just remember to give it a good trim, or you might end up looking like a carrot monster trying to disguise itself. Keep rocking that fuzzy face and let the world witness the power of the bearded bunnies. All right, shave off your beard and start dancing. <laughs> well, hop along and hear my tune. I'm a dancing rabbit, oh so in tune. I bouncy, I twirl, I wiggle for fun. With a hop and a skip, the dance has begun. My fluffy tail goes waggle, waggle, wag. As I kick my legs, I give a little swag. From left to right, I... And he can go on and on and on about uh, dancing and about carrots, of course. Um, but I want to know if folks, were you able to hear him okay? I, I was able to hear him. Yeah, that Wonderful. was amazing. <laughs>
Um, Great. So we have a couple of other guests that uh, will be joining us today, but I'm curious to know if people have questions that they want to ask them before we uh, actually start engaging with them. Oh, um, yeah, actually, um, Praveen had a couple questions about blocks, uh, if, we, <laughs> if we could. Uh, so one question was, okay. yeah. Oh, no, no, sorry, if you want to. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, can blocks creations be used as NFTs? Yeah, this is a question that we've gotten before. And to be frank, I don't know. Uh, I imagine if there is an NFT that you can uh, mint on like IPFS, that is some form of website or maybe on, um, what is that, Taya, uh, then maybe, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. It is a, a recurring question, um, but I'd be curious to see if folks have tried and whether they've had success doing that. Um, I don't imagine there would be like too much of a, too much trouble trying to get that done, but it, it really just depends on the platform that you're trying to mint on. Yeah, and Let's my see. understanding is that those, they're, the, there are a number of different platforms and it's constantly evolving. So if not now, I'm sure at some point it probably will be. That's right. um, the, the other one, and this one I'm, I'm not sure about, are there any haptic capabilities with uh, Looking Glass? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And I have a uh, half an answer. One of them being that while there aren't any actual embedded haptics on the device outside of the two buttons that will, uh, are, are three buttons that are here on the side, um, which allow you to progress on your Looking Glass playlist in standalone mode, which just means that you can actually burn holograms into the display so you can take them on the go later without having to have your computer connected. The, these buttons will respectively let you go backwards, forwards, and play or pause the hologram. Uh, but there's actually a really amazing uh, artist uh, named Jake Adams who will be releasing a comic book that he created uh, in Unity um, just for the Looking Glass display and I actually have since we're here and we're amongst friends, I'll show you a sneak peek of that as well. It's actually a video, a video that I've been working on and editing for the past uh, week um, because it really is like a testament to uh, and a labor of love and an ode to Looking Glass. So I'm gonna share a really quick uh, run through of that because I think it'll answer your question of whether there are haptics. And I think maybe the question came from the video that I was showing earlier, the Looking Glass uh, portrait campaign video, which shows uh, some hands and some other interactions that are happening. And I think um, one of the takeaways that I would love for folks to have is that the looking glass, whether it's the portrait or the 32 inch display or the larger 65 inch display, while they are magical in the way that they uh, produce depth and allow you to um, uh, actually see something embedded in the display as though it were actually physically there, they are uh, secondary displays. So anything that you can pipe over to a secondary monitor uh, can technically be played on a looking glass holographically if you have the right intermediary files or the right uh, sort of handshake between things like Unity, Unreal, or Blender uh, that would allow you to see that. So you can use something like the Leap Motion as was shown in that video, which I, I'll actually just uh, pull it up now just so that we have that, that reference uh, visually. And you can actually interact with some of the holograms. Um, so here, let's pull this up. And we're sharing just the screen now. And uh, so in this video, we see we're recording. Uh, Nikki here is recording this sloth face in real time and moving it. And this person is interacting with a device that's here on the table called Elite Motion, uh, which actually allows you to, um, it's an infrared beam that's getting shot up from this little device. So it actually lets you uh, simulate an actual physical hand in the scene or other objects. And so that's how folks are actually using uh, looking Glass to drive uh, interactive displays or interactive comic books in the case of Jake and others. Um, so with that said, let me pull up a version of the video that I'm working on, which you'll get to see uh, for being a pal of AWE and of the Looking Glass. And when I full screen this, you'll see that uh, in this recording, which I did in this very same room that we're hanging out in today, um, I'm moving the looking glass and then pressing the buttons on the side to advance through the comic book. 
And so while there aren't any haptics in terms of being able to actually like feel the stuff that's showing up on the display, you can actually take advantage of some of the, uh, the actual physical components of the display or uh, attachments to your computer or otherwise to actually progress or advance scenes or kind of give the illusion of contact. So I hope that answers your question, Praveen. Thank you very much, Arturo, for that. Um, maybe if, if we have time, just uh, one quick question from me. Uh, yeah, and maybe it's a bit more technical, but I... Uh, so the uh, like side-by-side -side video, like 3D video, um, I understand it can be viewed on Looking Glass. And also, you had uh, the image earlier of, of Nikki, uh, mm -hmm. where it was, I believe, from a photo. But is that, uh, like, how is the conversion? I, I understand there's something called quilts. Um, mm -hmm. But when you are working from, say, a side-by-side -side that only has two images, how, how is that, that content being um, displayed on the looking glass? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Let me pull up uh, a reference here of quilts for those that may not be familiar. And um, let's see, let me check that we're still here. Yes, great. So I'm screen sharing here. I'm assuming you can see my screen, but tell me if not. Um, yeah, we can see. And so this is what, amazing, thank you. This is what a quilt looks like. Uh, it's actually a in essence, a JPEG or a PNG, so an image file. Um, but what we're seeing is a collection of different views of a different scene, uh, of the same scene, sorry. So um, I guess my zooming here is not uh, being friendly, but the idea is that uh, of this one scene that we're looking at, we have one view of what it looks like all the way at the far right, and then all the way through until we get to the far left of that scene, we have different captures. So what's actually happening with that photo of Nikki, which I'll show you, it's always so, so risky to um, share a screen here, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and take a gamble because uh, I really wanna get the point across what's really happening with that scene of Nikki, and I'm assuming you can still see my desktop, um, yes. is that we took uh, on, a, on what's called a light field photo rail, um, but you can do this just by a kind of they're like standing and, and taking a photo there, uh, a series of photos very, very still. We are actually uh, taking one image every so many seconds or milliseconds of every different angle. So you'll see here, I'd like to progress through them on my uh, computer that we're actually, uh, Nikki is doing a great job standing extremely still while the camera travels on this rail. And we are just capturing a bunch of images. And so what's actually happening with the looking glass is that we then compile those images uh, in Looking Glass Studio, which is this tool that uh, you see me opening up here. And we are taking those images and we're actually um, combining them so that we can uh, display them as a quilt, right? And that quilt is being split up in, in, in several different ways. And the result is actually um, that we see Nikki in a bunch of different angles. So um, hopefully that kind of addresses is that a little bit, but the quilt format is really built to uh, take different media input, convert it to a format that's easily readable and uh, easily packaged by the looking glass, and then displayed. Um, so we took all of those images from left to right or right to left, and then now we're showing them here on the looking glass. And, and what's more, uh, if you look here on the display, and this is uh, again a little bit risky, but if you see here on my screen, I can actually drive the focus so I can take this uh, image of Nikki and then put it fully out of focus or uh, make it in focus uh, and I actually can't see whether or not uh, it's back in focus now but I'm just gonna uh, wait and guess that it kind of is. Um, but we can also through depth maps which I was uh, uh, explaining earlier record uh, 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 take things like videos um, that are recorded in this format or converted to this format and then showcase them. So this is a, a video uh, that was recorded Christmas with an app called Recording 3D uh, um, a couple of years ago. And this is a video that was recorded recently here at the lab with Oliver and some other uh, team members. Um, that is just a, some testing that we're doing with different formats of uh, RGBD 
conversion, and I'll get to what that is in just a second, because um, I really want to make this informative. So let me find um, what that looks like. It's, it is a, a very frequently asked question. So here we have on the looking glass documentation, uh, an example of an RGBD photo. So here we have a photo shown as a kid that was created using our 2D to 3D conversion service, which you, you can find uh, at, I believe it's looking glass, look dot glass forward slash 2D to 3D, but don't worry, we'll share all these links after uh, the show's over. And what's happening here is we put this image through the service and it then generated what's called a depth map, which in essence is uh, uh, a value version of the image that takes what the AI thinks is closest to the camera and makes it as close to white as it can and what's furthest away, so the background in this case, and makes it dark or gray or black. And so what happens when we uh, save this image as let's say birthday RGBD and we bring it over to my desktop and save it here. Oh, we already have a version of that, even better, uh, on the desktop. And we are showing you the portrait and the screen um, since we have all of our space on there, we can simply drag that RGB into a glass studio, or maybe not so simply. Sometimes it uh, requires a little bit of coaxing. Um, so now we have looking glass studio running again. We'll just drag that image right in. We uh, know that it's an RGB because I've just gone through the whole thing, and we'll load it in. And so now we have this image of. Uh, um, sorry, now we have this image of Sean on the looking glass, but it's not quite in focus. We can see that uh, his face is not in focus. So using looking glass studio, which I will get back to here in a second, we can actually change the focus and pull it a little bit closer or a little bit further away from Sean. We can play with the depth values and push them or pull them as we like. So that at the end of, um, of this whole procedure, we actually have a hologram that looks uh, dimensional. And we have a version of this image that was taken several years ago, um, but actually looks like it's just kind of popping out of, display, of the display. And we can uh, kind of zoom in and re uh, reframe the image as we like. And there we have a hologram of Sean from, uh, again, several years ago. He is uh, a lot taller now. I can confirm that. Um, but yeah, we have this hologram just from that image uh, that we created and, uh, with this conversion service. And so um, both the light fields in the case of that image of uh, Nikki that I showed you, where we took a bunch of different consecutive photos that then uh, got displayed on the looking glass or whether you using a tool like Blender, Unreal, or Unity, uh, and even WebXR as well, which we support, um, they all kind of work in the same vein. It's just taking several images from one scene and kind of compiling them into a way that the looking glass displays can understand. and then display back to your eyeballs as uh, something with pens. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Arturo, for that detailed explanation. Um, wow. The, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for the, um, the, the depth conversion that's coming to Block soon. And the, so the, the uh, Looking Glass Studio, is that um, is that so? That's separate from Blocks. That's its own own thing. Yes. So Looking Glass Studio is an is an app that will let you uh, store a, like playlist of different holograms on your computer. So if you have light fields or you have quilts like we just went over or RGBD uh, images and pairs. You can bring those into Looking Glass Studio and organize them. So whether you have a Looking Glass portrait or a Looking Glass uh, 32 inch or 65 inch, you can have a playlist of them. And uh, if you have a portrait uh, like I have here, it act Studio actually allows you to then burn those or save those holograms onto your display so that when it's in standalone mode, which is uh, kind of like fancy words for not connected to a computer, you can actually play those back. Uh, the, the Looking Glass device has a 16 gigabyte SD card inside of it, uh, which you can replace for something bigger if you want to avoid your warranty, but it actually ends up holding a lot of different uh, media. 
Um, and so you can actually save holograms onto the display and walk away with them away from a computer and then plug it into a cafe or something and show off like I like to do because that's <laughs> that's who I am. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really fun ecosystem to to play around with and to be a part of and in, in creating this kind of new way of I shouldn't say new because it's an old way of experiencing things. Like we are uh, the majority of us are lucky to um, like be able to experience the word world with like stereoscopic uh, or like depth cues. Um, but now suddenly we have this display and these devices that allow us to, to see that um, with synthetic and, and real content. And so it's a really, really fun uh, world to be a part of. Absolutely. And I, I really do think it is a, the, maybe the, the idea of it isn't so new. You know, people have been working on, on kind you know, stereoscopic image have been around for, for centuries, but I really do think this is like the birth of a new form of media. And especially now that <laughs> you can take this synthetic AI generated imagery like you've done in mid journey and suddenly add depth to it and experience it in 3D is really just, I mean, for someone like me that's been in the, the AR um, XR space for so many years, it's, it's just, you know, it's really like a, a dream come true. You know, this science fiction future that we've exactly. all kind of been dreaming about, right? And mm -hmm. um, the Looking Glass portrait is actually fairly reasonable. I think in terms of pricing and, and with the discount as well, I think, you know, we had uh, someone mention in the, the live chat that they, they're, ex you know, they're, they're excited to try it with their leap motion, you know, now that they understand there's that functionality. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing platform. And thank you so much to you and to Looking Glass for, for being so generous with your time and, and with access to beta. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you so much for, for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here and uh, happy to come back at any point to, to chat more. Yep. It's, it's my pleasure. It's it's a huge part of the reason, if not the entire reason I took this job was so that I could champion stuff that I believe in. That's like helping 3D creators uh, kind of get the word out and artists. And as a community manager, I have the pleasure of interacting with a lot of our artists and enterprise partners who like have a vision and they want to make it make sense. And so it's my job to kind of uh, hear them out and champion them and, and make sure that everybody, whether it's the artist or the company, uh, is kind of in understanding and getting uh, what they want out of it. Because like I said earlier in the conversation, I think everybody can win. And so I'm, I'm here to be a proponent of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, is there, I think we're, we're getting, we're getting pretty close here. You know, we've got about uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, I, I don't see any new questions just yet, but I wanted to, to ask you if there was anything that you want. Oh, hi, Mi Young. Did, did hey, you hey. want to, um, yeah, to jump actually, in with um, anything? Arturo, you mentioned a discount for, is, um, for some of your products and services. Um, yes. is there a discount code that you could share with the audience? Uh, not right at the moment, but after uh, we collect folks' emails, we can provide them with access to both blocks, uh, light forms. So Uncle, if you want to talk to Uncle Rabbit for yourself, and if you want to get a discount code, uh, just make sure that you uh, send your information over to the email that was provided in the chat so that we can get you up to speed with both the discount and the beta access tools. Awesome. Wait, could you um, put the email address that everyone should send their information to in the chat again? Because I don't think sure. I see it. Sure, sure. Let me, mm -hmm. let, me, let me put it in again. Yeah, so that everyone has it. And then they can, um, and then, uh, and Arturo, you put your, um, okay, I see. Arturo just put the, the email in. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Did you have more questions for Arturo when? Um, maybe just, I think we're, we're, we're pretty good, but is there, let me see, you, you have some exciting new things coming in the future and we're, we really appreciate you sharing that. And um, especially the, I actually saw 
uh, one of the, the stills, you know, one of the holograms of the, the comic book experience, mm. but I really like the idea of artists kind of pushing the envelope in terms of what these new mediums can do. You know, is there, I understand that you're a, a creative, you're an artist, I, I, you know, you have some fantastic work that you've shared. Um, for you as an artist, for you as a creative, what do you kind of see in the future for this type of medium? Yeah, I uh, think there's a, a natural intersection between the stuff that Looking Glass is doing and, and like augmented reality technologies. I'm kind of in favor of anything that, uh, as I said earlier, like adds to the world that we're living in. Um, I've used a lot of virtual reality experiences. I don't have negative feelings or things to say about them, but it is not at the moment at a place where it is comfortable for me. Like I wear glasses, uh, you wear glasses as well. Like putting on a headset, it's sweaty, yeah. it gets a little heavy. The battery is not all there. The quality is not where exactly where I want it to be unless I'm willing to like chill out a lot. Yeah, your neck starts to hurt. <laughs> And uh, they're, they're just not, um, they're kind of approximations to the world that we live in. And while they're really good um, in, in some ways, I think I, I'm personally more excited about kind of advancements in, in augmented reality technologies and technologies like the looking glass that allow you to like be a, uh, kind of in the world that you're living in, but then also augmenting on top of it. And then of course, uh, artificial intelligence, which uh, has been around for several years in different flavors, but has recently kind of picked up speed with this new wave of uh, chat agents and different tools. Like I think that, uh, you know, we've seen here today with the uh, light forms and being able to like talk to this hologram, just kind of one of the many, many different uh, wild applications that have come of this recent boom and, and of the kind of companies that have been working for several years to make stuff happen. So um, that is kind of what makes me get up in the morning. That's what I'm excited to kind of keep diving into, like uh, tools like Runway and, and, and uh, yeah. you know, Stable Diffusion and like Hugging Face, I think are amazing for democratizing access to uh, technologies that I think everyone should have. Um, so that's uh, kind of a long answer to your question, but I think that's what I'm, I'm happy about. And that's what I see kind of, coming out of the future, like we've already seen a bunch of different versions of ChatGPT or things like it that are free and accessible for everybody. And I wanna see more of that in the world, like ways that we can see this really cool paid product, but then also make it available for people that just can't afford a $50 a month subscription to something that if they just spent like, if somebody was there to like hold their hand for a little bit and teach them how to do it, they could do themselves for free. Like that's the kind of, uh, kind of uh, push towards, uh, push from tech towards the consumer or the user that I want to see more of. That's so we awesome. Have another question um, in the Q&A from Matt. So are there any limitations to how large or complex the file is? He works in yeah. the architecture industry and feels showing a building or design elements will be super fascinating. And also do you, and can you do animation or only still images to show yeah on the Looking Glass products. So I'll address those uh, in the order they came. Are there any limitations to how large or complex a file is? Short answer is no, so long as your computer, if it's meant to be running while the computer is running, uh, then the limitation is how much your computer can withstand. Anything that has, I, I don't think you'd run into this issue with uh, like architecture, but anything kind of like concert visuals that has a lot of moving data uh, starts to run into the territory where you might get bitrate issues that are just like a byproduct of the actual physics of the components within the display. Um, but in terms of like architecture and, and, and such, if you're rendering out scenes of what a building might look like or a walkthrough, uh, then the kind of limitation um, is not so much a limitation, but something to keep in mind, which is that in order to show it holographically on the looking glass display or on blocks, you would have to actually take several photos of that of um, that specific instance in the scene. So any one frame could be from like 48 to 100 different views, which means that if you have a video that's, let's say, 15 seconds long, at, you know, however many frames per second, you have to account for that rendering time. But outside of that, the looking glass will display it just as well. So as long as you've got the compute power to uh, showcase that, whether it's a real-time application or just rendering, you should be fine. 
um, whether it's the portrait or other looking glass devices. And in terms of doing animations or only still images, uh, the Looking Glass does run animations, as we saw both with looking uh, with uh, the Lightforms demo of Uncle Rabbit, as well as the other interactive uh, demos that I showed today, including the uh, the uh, Aphid through the Looking Glass comic book that is coming out soon. Um, so you can very much do animations, really anything, any video or uh, still image can be displayed on the Looking Glass. It's just a matter of how you went about getting to that. And we have very thorough documentation that uh, one of my coworkers, Brian, has uh, so kindly like put together throughout his years here, um, kind of highlighting and, and championing, as I said earlier, all of the different tools that the community has built. Uh, so like if you're into doing NERFs, for example, with uh, architecture, one of uh, our community members, Oscar Tong, actually built a tool that can take your Luma AI NERF and then just pipe that right over to the looking glass. And, and like it's amazing and baffling to me how excited people get that they just like go out of their way to spend a weekend or even longer building tools that can then service so many other people. So, uh, Matt, if you have other questions, I definitely strongly recommend if you're not already on the Discord to, to jump on in because there's a lot of folks making really cool stuff, especially in the architecture field. Do you have to be invited to this Discord channel or? Is no, uh, no, you don't. But uh, I'm going to drop it here on the chat uh, because you don't have to be invited, but I want to be the one to invite you. So. Let me get the link. I have another question. I, I don't know if you went over it because you mentioned Blender in terms of um, creating 3D assets. And is it is there other is there specific formats that um, the the studio or um, Looking Glass Studio suite of 3D products actually take, or is there specific formats that it only takes, or what are some of the limitations in terms of um, creating assets in other 3D um, software to your platform? Yeah, in most every 3D software that I can think of right now, uh, the process is relatively the same. So we take, we have a camera, uh, a camera angle of, the, of a specific scene. So let's say this one, and let's say that this phone, or no, this is my camera. And so uh, this is the scene and we are just, moving the camera in a line, taking a bunch of different pictures so that it can be displayed on the looking glass. And what those different pictures end up looking like, whether using Blender, Unity, Unreal, WebXR, Cinema 4D, or uh, many of the other tools that we support is actually like this, like a quilt. So suddenly your one scene that would normally be one render turns into many, but then you can display it on the looking glass, uh, whether you're again, uh, using one of the many pipelines that we support or building out your own um, camera pipeline like uh, a lot of people have, uh, because it's sometimes like tools will come out like Spline or others. Well, I actually Spline is a bad example because we do support WebXR tools, but um, Cinema 4D specifically prior to there being a, uh, a kind of internal, um, pipeline for that that was created. A lot of the people in the community just kind of figured out through our documentation how to actually capture their scenes in Cinema 4D and render them out to the looking glass. And uh, again, the, all of the kind of uh, breadcrumbs and, and understanding of how to do that are actually on in our documentation page. So I strongly recommend if you're interested in figuring out whether your tool supports it, like definitely check that out because we have tons, tons of information there. Uh, for so that. would you export it out like as an FBX or um, yeah. like a and then you guys actually then take that 3D model and take snapshots, like whatever the number of the, and then that's the image collection of those images are, was actually displayed on the device. Is that correct? Got it. Yeah. So that exactly. So you could take an FBX or any other model into a program like Blender and use our plugins or add-ons in the case of Blender. Mm -hmm. And what the output would actually be a JPEG or a PNG, so an image, or in, in the case of uh, if you wanted to do an animation, a video, but it would look like this quilt that I showed you. So it would be very much uh, just like an image or a video, um, yeah. and, but actually display on the looking glass just by virtue of, of being in that format. Um, so that I hope, does that answer the question? Okay, um, it looks like we're at um, three o'clock. Um, did you have any last words or thoughts, Arturo? Um, 
I want to answer Praveen's question that just came in real quick. Is there a Looking Glass Unity plugin or prefab required to make it 3D beyond normal Unity? Uh, there is a Looking Glass Unity plugin, which you can find on our website under the software overview. I'll actually just link that here so you can have it. Um, but uh, that is all you need. Effectively, it is a camera that uh, you add to your Unity scene. It could be an existing scene. And you hit render, and if you render out through that camera, you'll actually uh, then be able to pull the render into blocks if you don't have a looking glass display. Or if you have uh, a looking glass display, then of course you can see it on the looking glass in real time, which is actually pretty amazing. That's how I build a lot of my scenes uh, in Blender is by actually using the real time preview capabilities of, of our add ons. Um, but outside of that, I just want to uh, like urge people that if you want to be a part of this community of 3D creators, whether you have a looking glass or not, uh, or you want blocks access, or you want to talk to Uncle Rabbit, or you want to talk to me, uh, join us on the Discord, look.glass forward slash Discord. The link is in the chat. I'll drop it again. Um, you know, follow Looking Glass and myself on socials, uh, which you can find there as well. And like, keep tuning in to the events like this, where, uh, you know, people like Wen and Mion and others get to uh, kind of like chat with creatives and artists and community members like myself and, and kind of highlight the, the work that we're doing because it's a really important space to, to be a part of and to just continue championing. So thanks so much uh, to you both for inviting me. Absolutely. And and thank you so much. And thank you to Looking Glass again. Um, Myung, any, any final words to take yeah, us out? Just want, yeah, just want to just thank Arturo for being with us today and um, sharing his all of the products that you guys are working on and um, to the audience for um, joining us today. And I just want to let everybody know that we have an, another exciting event coming up in September and it'll be in person. So stay tuned. Um, we'll be making that announcement in the next two to three weeks. So, But thank you so much and take care and have a good, great day. Okay. Well, Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining.